All right, guys, uh, we got a good show for you today. We have Silas Sunday. He goes to our Sager Lutheran in Bronx. Thanks for coming on, man. I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, I've been watching some of the game. A few of my friends are from New York, and, you know, they always told me to try to get you on, so I'm happy that you could come on. Uh, Thank you. So I have to ask you, let's start off with the would you rather. Would you rather mm-hmm. hit a buzzer beater in the final four to win or hit a – Hit one to go to overtime in the national championship. Uh, I'd rather hit one to go to overtime in the national championship. Even if you didn't, even if you lose the game. I'm not. If we go overtime, I'm not losing the game. <laughs> that's that's the mentality I like to hear. Um, so you have a little interesting, you know, background. You're a family. You're from Ireland. You were uh, born in Italy. Uh, talk yeah. about. Uh, your time in Ireland and the basketball competition over there, and what it was like? Um, in Ireland, I started playing when I was like eight. So I played over there. Uh, I played for a club team named Liffey Celtics, and I played for my school team, uh, CBS. And the competition there, there is good talent there, but if I, if I was to be honest, the competition is nothing like over here. So yeah. that's why I moved out here. And my coach back home, Coach Rob, he introduced me to Coach Dana, who helped me to move out here. Yeah. So in Ireland, did you play any other sports, or was it always just basketball since, like, eight years old? It was always just basketball. If it was if it was any other sport, it would, it would have been, like, during, like, P or something like that. Yeah. All right. So uh, you talked, you kind of alluded to it a bit. You moved to the United States from Ireland when you were uh, 14 years old. Uh, talk about that transition and then, you know, what made, you know, going to the Bronx the right decision for you? Um, it, it was, it was kind of difficult at first because, you know, I wasn't my body and myself. I wasn't in shape like to be playing like the competition and the speed level over here Uh so it was kind of tough at first but um what's the name i I tended to what's the name get better get better and get in shape more yeah so that helped me and i knew i knew also was the right one because I worked out with them and I seen them play. Yeah. I, I pract- I was at their practice. I seen them play and they just treated me as family. Coach yeah. Peter Wade treated me as family. And Coach Charles Jones treated me as family. The whole OSL staff treated me as family. So I yeah. knew it was it was the right it was a good fit for me. Mm-hmm. So uh some of your family uh still lives over in Ireland. Uh how do you stay in touch with them? I don't know, WhatsApp, just texting on WhatsApp, calling, stuff like that, staying in touch. Yeah. And my my little brother, you know what I mean? My little brother just plays video games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So talk about how the recruiting process has been for you, especially during COVID. I imagine it's hard for you to talk to teams and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, last year, last month, uh, I gained a bunch of offers during quarantine. It was like eight offers during quarantine. Uh, all my offers that I have during quarantine. And uh, it was exciting. It was exciting. Like, especially the first offer, it was, it was really exciting. So, and. Yeah, that's my next question was, uh, what was it like getting your first offer? How did it happen? Where were you? And everything. I was at home. I was at home, uh, you know, because we didn't we didn't have nothing going on, because COVID just started, and everybody was on lockdown. Yeah. And then uh, my coach called me, and told me that Kansas State offered, and for our first offer, that was big. Yeah. So I, I was I was like, at first I didn't believe it. Like I was like, you yeah. sure? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, this season, you know, you talked about COVID and everything. You guys got to travel a little bit to some place in prep schools. 
Um, what was that experience like for you? The experience was great. At, at first, you know, we tried to find ourselves. Um, we, we started off the season not not so well, but later on we like gathered ourselves, uh, learned how to play with each other, and we ended off the season hard. Yeah. So, um, you know, what are you trying to work on before college to make that transition easier for you? Mainly my body, my body and my conditioning, keep improving my conditioning. Yeah. All right. Uh, how would you describe your basketball game to someone who's never watched you? Um, I, would, I would describe it as being old school, old school big with IQ, I guess. Yeah. So if did you model any of uh, your game after any current or former players, or is it always just your own thing? I try to model after like Embiid and Jokic. Yeah. You know, M Embiid just punishes people. Jokic does the same, but he could pass as well. Uh -huh. Embiid could pass too, but he yeah. doesn't need to on the team that he is. So yeah. Jokic needs yeah. to be more of a distributor on the, the Nuggets. He's got he's got a, yeah. he's got Simmons and some of those guys to help him out. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're wide open, don't it doesn't matter the score. Um you you can hit any dunk you can. What are you doing? Say you I can would, hit would, any dunk. You can hit any of these. This is like a made up world. You can do anything you want. I would do a a, a back scratcher and just hang on it heavily yeah and, and try and break the backboard <laughs> yeah that one's uh i always go with the, i always like the 360 if i could dunk i wish i'd just do those 360s and then break away okay so this in your high school career what has been your favorite moment to this point oh when last year when our school won the gac tournament for the first time yeah that's a big tournament yeah. in uh, new york yeah we we won it last year, and for the first time, that was my favorite moment. Yeah. Uh, final question. It's always the hardest one. How do you want people to remember yourself when your basketball career is over? I want to. I want people to remember me as as one of the greatest players of all time, and someone who also is capable of giving back to people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really respect that answer, Sass. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate this. Okay. Thank you for having me.